So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the heavy side function to write down concise formulas for uh, piecewise functions. So first let's go over what the heavy side function looks like as a graph. So the heavy side function is zero when t is less than zero, and for t greater than zero, the heavy side function is one. Some people will define the heavy side function to be one at the origin, but for our purposes, it doesn't really matter. So in this course, you'll see different notations. In particular, in web work, you'll see different notation for the heavy side function. Sometimes the heavy side function appears as h of t. Sometimes you'll see it as u of t. And a more complicated version has it with a subscript, where the subscript denotes where the jump is. So I've put a little uh, zero down in the subscript here to indicate that the jump from zero to one occurs at t equals zero. So if you wanted to shift the jump to other points in each of these notations, you could write h of t minus a, and this shifts the jump to a point t equal a. And that would look, in u, it would look like u of t minus a. And then in the subscript notation, it would look like u sub a of t. So all three of these are exactly the same function. So as a first example, let's look, what the heavy side, look at the heavy side function when you uh, change the argument from t to t minus a, and there, as you might expect, you have the jump now occurring at a. So it'll be zero before it reaches a, and then jumping up to one at a. Next, let's look at what happens when you take a difference of two heavy side functions. So you'll notice if t is less than one, it'll also be less than two. And so when we go to plot it, if we're below one, both of these two will evaluate to zero. Once we get above one, but we're still below two, this function here, h of t minus one, will now be one, but this one will still be zero. So the jump, the function jumps up to one at that point. And then as soon as we hit two, both of these will be one and their difference will be zero, so we jump back down. So this is the way you could get a single square wave function using a heavy side. So next example, what happens if you take the heavy side function and you multiply it by some function of t, let's say in this case, the simple function t. So as before, this will be exactly zero up until t equals zero, but then once you get above t equals zero, the h of t is going to be one, and you're multiplying that by t. So we get the function t, a straight line, rising with slope one. So next example, what happens if we now shift the heavy side function and then still multiply by t? So here we have, uh, up until t equal a, this whole function will be zero because the heavy side part is zero. But now, where does this function start? Does it start down at a and increase with a linear ramp? Well, if you plug in and see what the very first value is, when t is equal to a, we get h of zero here, and then the height of that is being multiplied by a. So as soon as we get above a, this t value will be above a as well, and that means that the function starts up high, well above the x-axis or the t-axis. So what if we wanted an actual ramp that started off zero up until a and then gradually increased? Well, we'd have to shift both the heavy side and the function we're multiplying it by. So what that means is we would have zero up until a and then right at a, as we start getting a non-zero value from the heavy side, we would now start at zero with this part of the function, t minus a, which would now start at zero and increase linearly from that point. And so this covers the basic idea or the basic ideas of how we're going to construct other heavy side functions uh, or other piecewise functions using heavy sides. Um, so you can see this one is going to be important because it allows us to get zeros outside an interval and have one inside that interval. And then this idea here of multiplying a heavy side by another function allows us to actually get non-constant functions in the interval when the heavy side is equal to one.
So now let's try to do a more complicated function. Let's try and turn this function here, f of t, from a graph, which is a piecewise linear function, into uh, an expression using Heaviside functions. So f of t, uh, let's break it into pieces. The first region, so there's actually two ways to do this, and I'll show both, but first I'll do what I consider the more straightforward way, but gives you a more complicated expression in the end. And then I'll do a simpler way. So first notice that this function is going to be 0 everywhere up until 1. And we have a specific function we like from 1 to 2. So first I'm going to include this u1 of t minus u2 of t, which is exactly the same as the heavy side of t minus 1 minus heavy side of t minus 2 that we already talked about. This gives me a flat section of amplitude 1 between 1 and 2. So that's not ideal. What I want is to multiply this by the actual function that I'd like to have in that interval. So it'll be 0 before 1, it'll be 0 after 2, but right through here I want it to be the function t minus 1. So I multiply this step function or this um, square wave function by t minus 1. And that gives me a function that is 0 everywhere except in 1 to 2. And in that interval, it's a linear ramp with slope 1. So next, I'd like to add to that a completely different piece. And that is something that is 1 between 2 and 3. And this time, it's a flat step function or a plateau. So I don't need to multiply it by any function. This already gives me a value of 1 between 2 and 3. So you can see by constructing it in chunks where each piece that I'm adding to the others is 0 outside of a specific interval, we can focus on just one piece at a time and construct it that way piece by piece. So the next piece I need is coming down from 3 to 4 and there I want to have a basic plateau that I'm going to multiply by some function and what is the critical feature of this function. It's a straight line that hits the origin, or sorry, it hits um, 0 at t equal 4, and it has a slope of minus 1. So the thing we need to multiply by here is 4 minus t. And now this will give us a heavy side representation of the function in the picture above. Now let's try a slightly different way of writing down f of t using heavy sides. They'll be the same in the end, but it will require some simplification to show that one is the same as the other, and I'll leave that to you to go through. Um, the advantage of doing it this way is when you start taking Laplace transforms, the calculations will be much more straightforward than with the other form. So first let's just start off with a function that's zero initially, and then it turns into this linear. And we'll just let it continue going indefinitely and we'll fix it up later um, once we get the first part correct. So the first part, we want it to be 0 up until 1. So we use the heavy side function starting at 1. And then we want this to be the function t minus 1 after that point. Now this is where we sort of like what we started with before, but now I will have a function that starts at 0 and then ramps up indefinitely. Now I want to change that from 2 on. So instead of getting a function that goes up like this, what do I need to subtract off from that? Well, I don't want to affect it at all before 2. So I'm going to subtract off the function that gets chopped down to 0 before 2. But then above 2, I want to subtract off, well, nothing at first, and then an increasing amount as I go on and the increasing amount should have a slope of 1. So what function that I want to subtract off has a slope of 1 and is 0, because that's how much I want to subtract off, right at t equal 2? Well, that would be t minus 2. So now this will bring my function down to here. And now above, it's still incorrect. It'll now continue going flat until I correct for the next interval. So again, I want to subtract off some function. And if it was a steeper function that I wanted to subtract off, I could put a higher slope here. But the slope of the thing I want to subtract off is, again, just 1. I don't want to have any influence before 3. So I only want this to change things above t equal 3. And I need to subtract off something that's 0 right at 3 and then grows linearly with slope 1. 
So that will be the function t minus 3. And now again, if I wanted to have this have a, a higher slope, if I wanted this to come down more quickly to 0, then I would just include a larger slope in front here. But I don't need that for this example. Now what I've got so far is a function that looks exactly like this bump, but then it continues to go negative out this way. So we need to now add back a linear function that brings the whole thing to zero. So we only want to have influence beyond t equal 4. So I start off with a heavy side starting at 4, and I multiply that by whatever function I need to add back. And that function that I need to add back to get to this flat line will have to be 0 right at 4, and it'll have to have a slope of 1. And that would be the function t minus 4. So now this one is a little bit easier to deal with when we start taking Laplace transforms, although perhaps it's a little bit harder to see how it's constructed.